There are three types of repetition that I've used pretty much my whole drum soloing life to add intention and form and coherence to my solos. Those are exact repetition, anchor repetition, and thematic repetition. Exact repetition is exactly what it sounds like. It's repeating something precisely. And what this does for the audience, for the listener, is it A, puts them in a little bit of a trance, right? You start to develop a serious expectation subconsciously for the thing to continue. Which means that the second thing here is that when you do something small, it's noticed, right? Little changes go a long way. This gives you, this gives you an opportunity to do a lot with a little. So for example, if I've got some exact repetition going on here, Right? So I'm just playing a pattern that any of us could, could learn to play relatively quickly. And what I did, drop the kick out. Right? Normally, taking the kick out might not be a big, impactful thing, but you've lulled the listener into listening to this. And when you hit them with something different, even if it's a removal, it's a big moment. Right? And you can do this melodically as well. If I come up with a melody here that, um, let's say I'm improvising. Right? I'm repeating a melody, and then for a moment there, I departed completely into... Right? That might not normally be an interesting phrase, but in the midst of this trance that the listener has started to fall into, that really stands out. Right? So this is your opportunity to make a small idea really take the spotlight by creating the, the setting, the frame, by framing it in this way with a bunch of repetition. Okay. Exact repetition. There are many other ways you can use that, but that's the crash course. The second way, anchor repetition. This is the, the type that is super familiar to most people. This is like a very instinctual soloing thing. Right? The classic anchor in uh, soloing is to go like... So boom, boom, I'm providing my audience an anchor, something that they can hold on to. And the beautiful thing about an anchor is that between the anchors, right, the anchors are so coherent for the listener. They're so obvious. It's such an easy thing to follow that you can literally do anything between the anchors. And it will more or less make sense, right? And you can, you know, take, the, take, that, take those liberties as far as you want. You can also make the the pieces between the anchors extremely through line coherent like a thing that builds within itself but this is your chance to throw in some stuff that you just want to throw in right because you got the anchor suddenly I'm playing like a pop punk groove anchor suddenly I'm playing like a jazz swing and like somehow it works right Right? But now here's a subtle anchor. Right? This is the sort of like obvious anchor. Everyone's going to notice you're doing the anchor. You're making it very obvious. Something people can sing along to and clap to. But there's a way more subtle version of anchor repetition that no one will notice is happening, but that will make what you're doing feel like music. It'll make it feel intentional. Let me give you an example. Listen to what I'm doing and try to put a finger on what I'm thinking my anchor is. Here we go. To cat, go on to the cat.
my anchor in my head is I'm just hitting the ah of four in the first bar of two. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a uh, two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two. I can do whatever else I want around that. As long as I hit the ah, uh, it's going to feel coherent. Listen again. real subtle anchor, uh, uh, subtle anchor, and something that I might notice and no one else might notice. Okay, the third type of repetition, thematic repetition. Now this is the most general, this is the most vague, this can be as abstract as you want it to be, right? You could have the theme, for example, that you want your drumming, your fills, to sound like they're breathing, right? I always think of Dave Weckl with this type of thing, when he's doing triplet fills, they just have this flows like da 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 where you don't hear the like beginning and endings of, of patterns and, and rudiments and stuff. Maybe that's a theme that you're trying to create in your soul. Or maybe the theme is sort of a sonic palette. You're saying I'm really focused on the symbols, and in this theme, I'm gonna the symbols is my home base, and I'm gonna wander off into some other melodies that I come up with, and I'm always gonna return back to the symbols, right? You have kind of like a it's almost like a sonic anchor you've come up with. This theme of like it's not a specific melody, it's not a specific placement, it's a color palette, right? So I'm on the symbols, that's where I come back to. That's how the audience recognizes this section. They walk away thinking the section where he kept coming back to the symbols and then doing some stuff and coming back to the symbols. I don't know what this would sound like, but if we try it, right? Right, boom, I've just created uh, a theme that is guiding my playing, right? Because tools for creativity, which is what we're talking about right now, ways to make our, our improvising feel composed, feel intentional. Uh, these are mental tools that we can, we can just bring to bear on whatever we're doing in the moment and make it make sense, make it make sense to us, make it make sense to our audience. It keeps our playing focused, it excludes a lot of ideas. And for the audience, we're always thinking, like, how would the audience describe this section? And if we can come up with a way that the audience could describe the section, then we're probably playing in a way that is musically digestible for a normal person. It doesn't mean we have to dumb things down to a point where it's not exciting for us. It means that we're just taking the composition, the musical, uh, 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 you know, adjectives that describe what we're doing into consideration and we're taking that means we're taking our audience into consideration which is huge so anyways repetition one of the main tools in music one of the main tools available to you on the drums and we just talked about exact repetition which highlights the small changes anchor repetition which gives you pretty much free reign to do whatever you want in the middle and thematic repetition which basically captures everything else so if you're into these creative ideas like, comment, subscribe on the stuff. There'll be more coming. See you soon.